question is from Smitty Junior 85. Is there an optimal heart rate to perform your next set in order to maximize muscle growth? Oh, you know what? That's a that's actually this cool question. You yeah, picked this question? Yeah, I did. I I don't know if there's an optimal heart rate. Sure there is. But what what is it? Well, I mean this is this like, is, I don't know if there's a number that we no, could. no, no. This is what I would say though is you want you don't want to break your cardio threshold, yes, and that's it. That's more important, like yeah. you because once you do that, then you switch over systems, and now your body is is different energy systems, yes. So now, now we are now doing something that is aerobic instead of anaerobic. So, and this is, I think, a mistake actually. Uh, I, I see this a ton in things like Orange Theory and CrossFit and circuit-based type of training where you don't allow the heart rate to level back out, and it really is just cardio with weights. Now, does that mean you can't build muscle? No, you could still build muscle by doing cardio with weights, but it's not the most optimal place for maximizing muscle growth. Which is, that's why I like this question because mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. to maximize muscle growth, you 100% would like your heart rate to drop back down before you go into yes. each set. Yeah, if, you're, if your cardiovascular fitness is getting in the way of your workout, like if you notice that the limiting factor with your, with your weights is the fact that you can't breathe. Um, then you need to take longer rests. If that's getting in the way, then that means you're training above your cardio threshold. And like Adam's saying, now you're doing cardio. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just you're not now maximizing and utilizing the weights for what they're best at, which is building strength and building muscle. You're now building stamina and endurance, and you're doing you know, cardiovascular activity with weights. Now, that being said, um, you know, I like to train in, in a variety of different ways when it comes to my heart rate. There's definitely times when... I'll take longer rest periods where I'm not, you know, uh, I'm, I'm letting my heart rate come way down where I feel not cooled off, but I definitely feel like, okay, I can maximize my strength for this next set. And then there's times where I like to keep the pace up a little bit and I like to push the limit. I don't like to get out of, I'm, like, again, I don't like to push and get into cardio levels, but where I will rest 30 seconds, 40 seconds in between sets and keep that up throughout the whole workout. Um, and, and keep this in mind. Most people listening right now work out because they want to improve the way they look and they want general overall good results. If that's you, then I would say train in a variety of different heart rates. Allow your body to acclimate and adapt to one style of training and then shorten your rest period or lengthen the rest period. And the one that's going to benefit you the most is the one that's probably most opposite of what you're doing yeah, right you're, now. Yeah, you're just the new stuff. That novelty yeah. is what really gets the body to change. Now, if you're a power lifter... Most of the time you're going to work out is going to be spent in allowing your heart rate to come way, way down. Bodybuilders tend to train with a little bit more of a quick pace, I think, because they're chasing the pump. But I think all of them have value. I've, I'd Look, if you look at studies, studies will say resting two minutes in between sets is best for building muscle. Um, and that's true. If you do a head-to-head, -head, you know, eight-week study or 12-week study, you're going to find that. The problem is, uh, one of the problems I have with all these studies is, they're not following the, following the people for a year or two years. Because mm -hmm. what ends up happening is eventually that particular application stops working. Then if you take those people and say, okay, you've been resting for two minutes. Let's have you rest one minute now. Now, all of a sudden, we start to see progress. Or vice versa. You take someone who's resting a minute and you tell them to rest two minutes. All of a sudden, you start to see progress. So I recommend people train in a variety of different uh, zones and heart rates and I do this for weeks at a time. So I'll do three or four weeks with longer rest periods. Heart rate is dropping you know, down, down pretty low in between sets. Then I'll do a few weeks where I'm pushing the pace and I'm doing more volume and I'm getting a better pump um, and I'm, I'm changing the, the, the way I'm, I'm applying the stimulus or whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, to get my body to respond. That's the way, that's what you need to take away from this, this conversation around this, uh, this particular topic.